Welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with the spirit of truth, parenting edition. These are messages that were separated from us in the book, The Spirit of Truth. The book, Spirit of Truth, contains 104 messages, and there is a compilation of them that we have separated that are specifically about parenting, about parents and children. So the good spirits at Kardec Radio asked us to dedicate these messages to a particular subset of our studies here, Parenting Edition. And it's no wonder the good spirits know the plans. It's the week of Mother's Day, and it's very important. Spiritism values motherhood like nothing else. The mission of all missions. Motherhood is the vessel through which we reincarnate. Without the blessings and the sacredness of motherhood, we couldn't be here. So we need to value motherhood. We know the world. We're all fighting for equality. There, it is fair law of equality. But equality of rights is one thing. Equality of roles does not exist. When we see spiritists who pride themselves, especially women, who come to me and say, my husband and I share 50-50 the care of children. Big mistake. But Vanessa, what if it doesn't happen? There is no 50-50 in terms of motherhood. Mothers will always do more, not because fathers can't, but because they just stayed, they nurse, and because they are the first teachers, instructors of their children. Something that people don't know when they are pregnant. When they are pregnant, they dream of, oh, we're going to do 50-50. It's inevitable, as we've seen, that motherhood is a pathway of joy, but of suffering, as we saw yesterday in a message by Andrelos. It's a pathway of renunciation, sacrifices, in the sense that it extends the limits that we have already achieved. We're going to learn things about us we've never learned before, but are we ready for this? That's why the spirit of Susana Virginia was asked by the good spirits that mentor the society to create a specific app, Spiritist Parenting. You can find it free through which many parents will find opportunities to receive instruction, information to instrument themselves to be better parents. Today, the coordinator, Emmanuel is the coordinator of this project of the Spirit of Truth, comes to us to talk about for the love of children. He inspired himself in chapter 8, Blessed are the Pure Heart, item 18, which is a message by John the Evangelist that came in Paris in 1863. Amongst other things, he says that Jesus wanted people, when saying, let the children come to me, to come to Jesus with the trust of the little beings of wavering steps. Jesus calling to them will win with the, him the hearts of women who are all mothers. He could submit souls to his tender and mysterious authority. Jesus was the flame that shone in the darkness. And he says, dear beloved, the time has come in which errors will become truths. We will teach you the precise meaning of the parables and we'll show you the strong correlation linking what was with what is. Truly, I say to you, spirit manifestations are increasing on the horizon in spiritism is the messenger that will shine like the sun on the mountaintops. So spiritism comes to explain to us 
What Jesus meant about let the children come. Of course, literally, let them come. Join the spiritist in the, in the meetings. The more we put the children aside, the less they learn to transition in the adult world. No wonder. Many teens have a hard time transitioning to the adult world because they were put apart for the longest time. This thing that we say, oh, these are not things for children. Mm -mm -mm. They need to learn, to watch, to observe like apprentices. Our mirror neurons, the more they watch the good that we may be doing, the more they absorb it, more than words. Today, Emmanuel is explaining the other meaning. He's saying, we also need to be pure in the heart to seek not only the good, but to help those who need help. Children depend on us, and so we need to extend our hand. Emmanuel says, for the love of the child. We who so often plead for the help of divine providence, pray to the heart of women, supplicating for the children of others. Let us ask for the worker of the good for the sake of the destitute children, whom human flowers struck by the wind of misfortune in the promises of dawn. We pray for the children who were thrown out in the alleys of nobody. We pray for those who wander aimlessly, frightened in the night of darkness. We pray for those children who suck their own fingers, contemplating through luxurious windows the abundant food that is wasted. We pray for those children who never saw the light of school. We pray for those who sleep, suddenly awakening the dark throat of the sewer. We pray for those children who have been relegated to the shelters of mud and become guinea pigs of destructive ones. We pray for those that had tuberculosis, and are surrounded by rags with that they cover themselves. We pray for those children who never heard a voice that blessed them and believed themselves cursed by fate. We pray for those who have been adopted by false tenderness and are kept in noble houses like small irrationals, constantly beaten by the rods of injury. And we pray for those other children who have fallen disoriented into the traps of crime and are surrendered to the addiction and indifference surrounded by the irons and punishments of prison. Earthly mothers, while you rejoice in the love of your children, unfold your arms to the motherless orphans. Let us remember Christ's unforgettable call. Let the little ones come to me. And above all, let us remember that if men must build the walls of the world to come, only women can convert it into the joy of life and affection of the home. We can't expect the role that is ours to be done by somebody else. Some people say, but I wish my husband were more spiritual, that he wore more this than in the other. How about if we do it? But I'm doing it, Vanessa. Maybe not to the extent that God wants us to do. God wants us wants more from us. That resilience, that endurance, that patience, that compassion. It's going to be sacrificial. 
because we're passing the limits we're used to. But that's evolution. If we don't start past the limits we've reached, we do not evolve. But now, Emmanuel is asking you and I to value the roles of everyone, fathers and mothers, parents. Value the role of women, but now focus on the children of others who are lost in the 10,000 things of life. He says, let us pray. How often do you pray for the mothers in the world? Parents that they may sustain themselves in their task. Today, when I was driving back home, I saw a father running while pushing the stroller of his baby. So beautiful, what a scene. He's caring for himself while caring for his child. And immediately, mentor Joseph said, Say a prayer to this father, because sometimes we're caught up in the needs of the material world, and we forget affection. It's not only important to take care of the body, to take the child for a stroll around the block, but most important, a hug, a tender look. A loving kiss, loving care, respecting that immortal soul that is fragile in the new body, so dependent on us, but immortally awaiting for the affection that we may not give. But more important today is the exercise that Emmanuel is asking you and I to do. First, to pray for all these children who are underprivileged. If that's a good statement, a good word, I'm not so sure, but you know what I mean. As Emmanuel says, the poor children, the children who didn't go to school, the children. But let us also find ways to reach out to these children. So here comes a tip. Fraternity Without Borders is a wonderful program in the world that started in Brazil and now has its several branches around the world helping children in the conditions that Emmanuel is saying to us. Children and their families, but mostly children. They are now receiving school opportunities, food, loving care, attention, medical care, psychological care, nutritional care. So if you can, go to their website, fraternitywithoutborders.org and find ways to volunteer or to donate. It doesn't need to be much. Remember our simplicity and humility. If we have $10, $10 is wonderful. Remember the widow in the temple. She only had a coin. But to God, it represented more than many coins that were given by the other ones. But let us give in the name for the love of children. Reaching out somewhat. But if you know specifically a group of children, reach out to them. Reach out to their parents. Let's give support to the parents, especially new parents, through prayers and actions. This is going to be a wonderful task force that you and I are going to do in the next 24 hours. Let us dream the dream of God and never leave anybody feeling that they are forsaken. Let us spread the good, mold the good with all 
the resources we have at hand. We wish you a beautiful day and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow when we come back in another chapter of the Spirit of Truth, Parenting Edition. Thank you, friends. <laughs>